going on guys and welcome back to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle today I have an NU match against Tabes this is a match from my live stream I had the other night and I decided to throw together some random NU Pokemon and see how well they would do together they actually ended up having some pretty nice synergy and uh, I really like this team so I'm gonna have a couple matches with this team up so let's get it started he leads off with a Scyther I decided to lead off with Gorgeist probably not my best choice considering he does have probably the Aerial Ace, but then again, I'm like, you know, I'm kind of defensive and shit, so I was like, you know, I'm just gonna throw a Will-O-Wisp at you. I know I'm gonna be able to take, like, half from that Aerial Ace, and honestly, it's worth getting this Scyther burned, because Scythers can be really scary, especially in NU. If they get some Swords Dances up after the Technician boost and all that, his, his, his moves do damage, let me tell you. So, I do land the burn, and I'm like, thank God you did not miss, you damn pumpkin. I, for some reason, I miss a lot of Will-O-Wisps. It's, it's, it's ridiculous, but... Now he just decided to go for the U-turn. I just actually stayed in considering um, I'm going to be able to take another Aerial Ace if you wanted to go for it. But he just decides to switch into the Vile Plume, which is a nice play because I decided to go for the Leech Seed. So the Vile Plume's out here. I don't have really much I can do to this thing. I can burn it and risk taking a Sludge Bomb with a lot of damage. So I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'll do it. <laughs> I don't have anything to lose, really. Gorgeist is not looking too important for this match. So I decided to go for the burn as he is just going to go for a Sludge Bomb. And uh, that is not going to kill me. Gorgeist is not going down today. Um, so, I, this Gorgeist is amazing in NU. It has, it's just so damn bulky. I and mean, it can just burn everything, Confuse Ray everything. I just decided to actually stay in, go for a Confuse Ray. Considering Gorgeist has, like, no health at this point, I might as well just go for the Confuse Ray. Maybe I'll get lucky, have this thing hit itself, and it actually, um, does not end up hitting itself on the first turn, which is kind of, you know, I, I kind of deserve that. If <laughs> you're running Confuse Ray on a Pokemon, you kind of, you're kind of an asshole. But hey! I don't give a shit. So this vile plume over here is burned and confused. This this thing's just all sorts of fucked up. So I'm like, you know, I'll just go ahead and send out old Muck here. I know that vile plume. The only thing he's gonna really be able to do to me is like sleep powder me. But even then, he's not really gonna have much to do to me. So he's gonna switch back into the scyther here as I just decide to start setting up some curses. I'm like, you know, it is about that time for Muck to just start setting up some. Uh, some solid curses. Looking at his team, he does not have much that can hurt me after I get a couple defense boosts with the uh, with the curse. So that's pretty solid. Now he's just gonna go for an aerial ace after the burn, the burn plus one for my uh, defense. See, it's not gonna do a damn thing. And I'm able to hit it with an ice punch. And after the burn damage, um, if it doesn't kill it, I can I can just kill it with a shadow sneak. But the burn damage is in indeed going to kill it. So that is a dead scyther, and Muck is looking pretty awesome over here. After after a curse, Muck is a fucking threat. People sleep on this thing, but I'm telling you, you shouldn't. Honestly, this, he brings out the Miss Maggie here. He's going to um, set up a nasty plot, considering he's not going to be able to do too much to me if he doesn't have a, um, a special attack boost. So I actually just go for the poison jab. That's going to do a decent amount of damage. I don't get the poison touch, and I'm like, come on, Muck. Do your freaking job, bro. But then I'm like, hey, I got the Shadow Snake, and I'm just going to go for that. And the Miss Maggie is not going to like that one bit. So after the plus one attack, that is for sure going to kill the Miss Maggie. And at this point in the battle, I'm really just kind of showcasing the reason why Muck made it into my top 10 any Pokemon video. If you guys caught that, Muck was, Muck was for sure up there in the, in the top 10. And this is pretty much why, just because once he starts setting up curses, this thing is scary. But anyways, now he brings out the Pyroar. He does have the Fire Blast. Um, it does hit for him, luckily, and uh, luckily for him. But it's going to do over half to me, which is a bummer, because this Poison Jab is not going to do enough to kill this thing. Although I do get the Poison, which is nice. But unfortunately, I cannot go for the Shadow Sneak to just finish this thing off, because it's freaking normal type like what like what the hell pyro why you gotta have that dual typing although it makes you pretty badass pyro is actually in the top 10 also but luckily for him he is gonna be able to hit one more fire blast and that is gonna take out muck which is unfortunate but then again muck definitely put in work took care of a lot of threats and uh he actually even got the poison on this thing although it doesn't end up killing it of course because it lives with like one hp always and i decided to bring out my pussy at this point go for the fake out get that little priority and that pyro is uh not going to be around anymore so that's pretty cool del caddy just getting kills like it's his fucking job this this del caddy is actually really awesome i use it in quite a few matches and it definitely does its job let me tell you it's a del caddy looks shitty but hey it, it can it can work that normalize ability you can like thunder wave ground types it's just all sorts of fun so he brings out the Basculin, and I can't do anything with Delcaddy, so I decide to switch into El Pingu here, who's going to take a waterfall quite nicely. I got that Assault Vested Prinplup, which is a pr pretty much a threat, honestly. This thing takes attacks like it's nothing. And um, I actually decide to double switch here and go back into the pussy as he brings in the Lantern, and uh, that's fine by me. I'm just going to go for another Fake Out, get a little bit of a you know, little Stab Life Orb attack here. 
and uh, at this point I can go for the double edge and risk to see what he's gonna do I'm not entirely sure what kind of lantern this is yet so I actually just decide to stay in go for a double edge and that is going to do a, a little bit of damage to this thing you know lanterns are pretty damn bulky I'm not expecting much out of Delcaddy but he is going to go for the scald and check this out Delcaddy does not give a shit about yo scald lives it with 8 HP and I don't get burned so hey that's that's a win in my book right there pussy good shit good shit so now I'm able to just go for one more double edge it's gonna hit this thing pretty hard and it actually ends up killing the lantern and I was like Delcaddy you are fucking doing it right now this was the first match I had with this pussy and I was like alright that's that's what I'm talking about putting in that work takes care of the lantern and now I'm able to bring in my choice scarfed Krakatoa who is going to um not enjoy this matchup actually he, we had an empty field he brings in the basculin I brought in the typhlosion and I'm like yo gotta switch the hell up on out of here you already know what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna have to bring back in the old pingu who's gonna take this waterfall it just ba basically knocks me down to uh, a little under half which is completely fine but Pengu's not really too valuable at this point, I just basically know that he still has the Vile Plume. So he does switch into the Vile Plume, as I'm just gonna go for a Scald, trying to get like a burn on something, but the Vile Plume's already freaking burned, so you know, that's... that is not really gonna work out. So, at this point, he can just Giga Drain me and end up killing me, which is a bummer, and get a whole bunch of health back in the process. So I just decide, you know what, fuck it, I'm just gonna go for some Stealth Rocks. I don't really want to switch, I'm just gonna get these Rocks up for later, and uh, I'll let him kill me with a Giga Drain, but he actually goes for a Sludge Bomb, and I was like, that is perfect, because Pingu can live that, and that is what I am talking about. This, this, uh, this print Plup actually, actually puts in work, too, with an Eviolite. It's, uh, one of my only, like, defoggers and stuff. He can set up rocks and also get rid of stuff, so it's, it's pretty nice, but... Now I just, I just decided to go for a Scald. Um, he goes for the Giga Drain this turn. I'm guessing he probably predicted a switch last time going for the Sludge Bomb, which was a pretty nice play on his part, but I just kind of wanted to get the rocks up, as Prinplup wasn't looking too helpful for me in this point in the match, so yeah. Another reason why I decided to just let Prinplup die is because now I get a free switch into Typhlosion, who is definitely going to be able to take care of the Vile Plume and a lot of other stuff on his team. So, I just go straight for the Eruption, he decides to stay in because he doesn't really have any other switch-ins, and that is a dead Vile Plume. So, that thing's taken care of, Vile Plume is always a big pain in the ass, just so damn defensive. And, uh, yeah, so now he's gonna bring in Basculin, he does have the Aqua Jet, I'm assuming, so I'm gonna go ahead and not risk going for another Eruption, because it probably wouldn't have much power anyway, so I'm like, you know what, it's a fish battle you want, huh? So I decide to sit switch out into my own Basculin. And uh, he's going to take a waterfall, and that's way over half, and I'm like, holy hell, this is scary. So I actually just decided to go for another an Aqua Jet, and uh, considering he probably would have outsped me and been able to kill me with another waterfall, you never know with those speed ties, I just decided to get a little bit of damage. And his fish is going to come out on top. Unfortunately, my Basculin is going to die, but luckily now I'm able to bring back in the uh, Krakatoa, and I'm assuming that he is choiced in some way, so I am not really afraid of him going for the Aqua Jet. I just go for a Focus Blast, and that is going to be a dead fishy. So, that is going to be the end of the match there, guys. Good game, Tabes. And you know what? Actually, since this was a relatively short match, I'm actually just going to uh, have another one in this video. So, two battles in one. Hell yeah. Alright, so this next battle is going to be against Brandon. Um, I'm using the same team as last video, of course, and he actually has a pretty interesting team. I'm kind of afraid of the Jump Luff. He's got a Mega Audino, which is going to be a pretty big threat to my team. And uh, overall, it's, pretty, it's looking pretty interesting, so let's go ahead and get it started. So, I wasn't really too sure on who he was going to want to lead off with, so I just decided to throw my Penguin out there and hope for the best, as he leads off with a Furry, and I'm like, okay, I have no idea what the hell Furrits even do, like, honestly, um, so I'm just kind of going to stay in here and set up my Stealth Rocks as he just decides to go ahead and uh, U-turn out. I'm guessing he let off with it just to be, just get a little pivot, to kind of uh, get a little little matchup accordingly, so I go for the Stealth Rocks as he brings in the uh, the freaking Snowflake, and I was kind of wondering why he would bring the Snowflake in on my Prinplup, considering he can't really hurt me, um, he actually just goes for the Toxic, which kind of shows me he's a little bit afraid of this penguin, which is understandable. This thing is fucking, <laughs> it looks real scary. Just not cute at all, just real, just real tough. So I just decided to go for a Scald, hoping for the burn, and I actually get it, and that's pretty cool. But unfortunately, I'm poisoned. I don't have any form of recovery, so that's, you know, kind of a bummer. Although, at least Pengu, you know, kind of kind of got his job done. I got the Stealth Rocks up. I got a burn on the, on the Snowflake. You know, I'm feeling pretty content. So at this point, I go ahead and switch into Sup, considering looking at uh, Cryagonal's moves that's honestly does not really have much to do to Muck. I can eat up all of them special attacks. You already know Muck's, Muck's deal here. 
here. So he gets a critical hit on the freeze dry, and I'm like, hey, that's that's not freaking fair. Like honestly, still didn't do a damn thing though. After the black sludge, I'm gonna be looking uh, pretty pretty healthy over here as this this snowflakes burned. Probably not enjoying staying in here as he actually just goes for the rapid spin though, which is kind of unfortunate. He is gonna get rid of the stealth rocks. Luckily though, I do still have Pengu left, which is nice, so I can get those stealth rocks back up earlier or later. So I just decide now to go, you know, do my thing, do my muck thing. Start setting up some curses and uh, turning into an absolute beast. So he got the stealth rocks out of the way, but he's gonna pay the price in uh, letting me set up my muck here. Looking at his team, muck actually does quite well against it. So I'm, uh, I'm feeling pretty, feeling pretty confident here. He's gonna go ahead and switch out, and at this point he is gonna bring in Ellie, which is the um, the uh, the Flareon. Yeah, the Flareon comes in. I just go for another curse. I'm like, you know, I'm you know, I could use a plus two. Fuck it. I'm just honestly had no reason to go for a poison jab there, considering everything he switches into. Um, I can ha pretty much handle. So at this point, I'm at plus two defense, plus two attack. He actually ends up going for the superpower, and that was kind of really confusing. Maybe he was predicting a switch here or something like that. But the superpower, nevertheless, is gonna do <laughs> not a damn thing to Muck, as I'm able to hit this thing with a poison jab, and that is going to do a buttload of damage and end up killing the Flareon. So not really too entirely sure on why he went for the went for the superpower there. Literally anything else would have been would have done at least a little bit of damage. Now he's gonna bring out Coral Blue number three, which is an awesome nickname considering that's the uh, I'm pretty sure that's. That's the lipstick or something in Spongebob. I got a good solid laugh out of that one. But he goes for the Scald. He is unfortunately going to get the burn. But after, you know, I'm at plus two attack, honestly. I'm not really too worried about it. I go for the poison jab just to see if I can get a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of poison. And I end up getting it. So I'm like, all right. Unfortunately for me, he has a Rocky Helmet. Which kind of seems kind of productive. It's like, this dude's got a built-in Rocky Helmet, honestly. <laughs> Corsola, I would not enjoy poison jabbing a Corsola. That would, that would fucking hurt, but... Yeah, after that damage, after the burn damage, I'm like, you know, this is not working out with Muck. I gotta switch out. I'm gonna bring back in old Pengu here as he's just gonna set up an Aqua Ring, which is pretty interesting. I've never actually used a Corsola in NU, maybe a couple of times, but um, I, I don't really know what to expect from this thing. Um, the Aqua Ring is gonna be quite nice, because for him at least, because he's gonna get a lot of health back. And, uh, I mean, not a lot considering he is poison, so it's not really that productive. But, anyways, he's gonna now switch, as I believe he goes into the, the uh, he goes into this thing, the freaking Jump Luff. I hate Jump Luff. If there's anything you need to know about me, it's that Jump Luff is an asshole, and he always seems to destroy me. So, I get up my Stealth Rocks, actually hoping that he wasn't gonna bring this in, so he was have to take Stealth Rock damage later. But, he makes a nice play, brings in the Jump Luff, and, uh, now is my time to scout out what kind of Jump Luff this is gonna be. I bring in Yuyoko here, who's going to frisk the Focus Sash. I see that he has the Sash, and I'm like, okay, that's that's kind of weird. He actually sets up a Swords Dance now, which is going to uh, make this thing kind of scary. Swords Dance Jump Luff actually probably is one of my favorite kinds of Jump Luffs. Um, it can have access to like Bounce and like Seed Bomb and Acrobatics and stuff. I believe actually his idea with this Jump Luff is to set up a Swords Dance and then get knocked down to the Focus Sash, and then in the process, being able to use acrobatics with uh, full power and stuff like that after a swords dance is pretty scary. But he did hurt, hurt himself in the confusion there, which is which is the laws. Fucking Gorgeist just being a troll over here, making things hit themselves. And uh, he actually does break through the confusion here, but I was able to set up a Will-O-Wisp, so that acrobatics is not going to be able to do a damn thing. And at this point, all I can do is throw some seeds at it, because I literally don't really have much else to do. Um, but yeah, so he's confused, he's burned, and uh, the Jump Luff is pretty much no longer a threat, which is really nice. So he's gonna get hurt by that burn damage, and uh, I'm gonna see if he's gonna hurt himself here. I'm like, come on, do it, do it, he does hurt himself. And at this point, I just kind of feel real bad. I was like, oh man, I didn't... <laughs> I guess why I hate using Confuse Ray, because it's all really based on luck, and it's like, it could go really well, it could go really bad, but in this situation, it worked out for me. Confuse Ray Gorgeist is a pain in the asshole, and he has end up going to, he's gonna end up dying to the burn, so that's... That's pretty cool for me, at least. I don't have to worry about the freaking Jump Luff anymore, and that makes me happy. So, now he's gonna bring back out the Furret, who's looking nice and pink, all shiny and stuff. Um, I've actually never even seen a shiny Furret, that's, that's pretty cool. At least in a Wi-Fi battle, but... Anyways, I don't know what this thing wants to do to me, I'm expecting Knock Off or something like that to hit me with some, some power, so I decide to switch into Muck here, as Muck is looking not too useful to me at this point, considering he's burned, my physical attacks aren't gonna be able to do a damn thing, so I let him sacrifice himself for the Knock Off. The Furret's just gonna go ahead and hit me twice, and that is a dead muck, but that is fine because now I get a free switch in on whatever I would like. I decide to go into the pussy because I'm like, I wanna get this Del Caddy to do some stuff. So he's gonna switch out as I'm just gonna go for the fake out, I believe, as he brings in Shelly, the um 
Mega Adino, and this at this point, Mega Adino is really the only big threat that he still has left on his team, so I'm like, you know, the fake out damage does a decent amount, and I'm honestly just like, okay, I might as well just stay in here, actually hit him with a double edge and see how much that does. I know that uh, I might as well just stay in here, kind of scout out to see what this thing's going to want to do. This actually is, ends up being a pretty interesting um, Adino here. He goes for the Calm Mind, I believe, after this, this, uh, this double edge damage. It does a decent amount, and he's going to set up a Calm Mind, which is kind of scary because these things have such good defenses already and stuff. This, being, this thing's basically main objective is to set up some Calm Minds and be able to... Um, be able to deal some damage with uh, with some special attacks. I believe it's actually a physically defensive one too, considering how much that double edge did. Honestly, I don't know much about Delcaddy or how much it's supposed to do, but uh, that double edge did not do enough as not as much as I had hoped. But uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna stay in here. I'm like, you know what, fuck it. I'm just gonna keep on sending double edges. I don't give a shit. This thing's paralyzed. I went for the T wave, so I don't have to worry about this thing being uh, been able to outspeed. Honestly, Mega Do you know wouldn't outspeed shit, but. Maybe I get the pair of hacks occasionally, but he is able to finish me off with the draining kiss, and that's a pretty pretty unique move. That I like the draining kiss; it gets a lot of health health back and stuff like that. The physical mega Aldino physical defense wall is pretty interesting. So now I'm just gonna bring in Choice Banded Basculin, who does not care about your physically defensive mega Aldino, and I'm able to kill that thing with a waterfall. So that is pretty nice. Now he's able to bring back out the uh, Coral Blue number three, <laughs> and um. I'm just gonna go for, I think I actually just stay in and go for a waterfall considering this thing can't really hurt me too bad. And a choice banded waterfall from a Basculin is never, is never fun to take. I don't care who you are, unless you're like a water absorber, I guess that would be like the only situation. But <laughs> he's just gonna go for a Scald hoping for the burn, and he actually does not get it. So Basculin is going to be able to uh, freely kill this thing with a waterfall. Actually, even if I was burned, I would have been able to kill it with a waterfall anyways. But Waterfall is going to finish off the Corsola, and that is a dead motherfucker right there. I take the Rocky Helmet damage, which is really no big deal. But at this point, I still have Typhlosion left. I'm looking pretty solid, so he's going to bring back out the Furret. And I'm like, how fast is a freaking Furret? I honestly don't even know. He actually ends up um, outspeeding me here. He frisked me for my choice band. He actually outspeeds me, which I did not expect. I totally forgot that uh, Furret is actually pretty quick. But I am able to live the return because Basculin is a fish that does not give a fuck. Let's be, let's just make that clear. And able to kill that thing with a waterfall. So, choice banded waterfall, definitely gonna kill that thing. All he has left is his Coragonal, who is going to come in here and definitely not enjoy this waterfall. So, that is gonna be the end of the second match. I decided to kinda join these together because they're both pretty relatively quick matches, and uh, I figured why not give you guys a little treat with two Wi-Fi battles, but anyways guys, I'll have some more matches up soon along with the Let's Play, like I said earlier, and uh, I will see you guys later. Peace.